My name is John and I'm with Probity Tech. Today we're going to continue our series on SIP paging with FreePBX. We're going to dive into some of the capabilities of the CyberData paging server, model number 11146. So let's get started. So as you can see, we have the paging server all set up. And we also have an audio connection uh, in pins two and three here connected um, to, let's see, he goes to a paging amplifier, a little guy right here, and the output from that goes over to this little speaker. Now, I do recommend taking the time to set this up because uh, it's just helpful. You'll see in just a minute how it announces uh, things that are being done. So like when we reset it to factory defaults, it'll announce that. And when we want to know the IP address, it'll announce that. So let's take a look at a couple of other components that we have here. So we got uh, just a Sangoma phone on the, the uh, free PBX server. And we also have a Yealink phone. That's part of my demonstration board here. And around back here, we actually have the free PBX server. So it's just a little bitty tiny box, maybe an Atom processor. Not a lot of power, but for what I'm doing here, it will do just fine. So let's get started with resetting the paging server to factory defaults. Now on the back of it here, or the front, or however you look at it, there is an RTFM button here. I don't remember what that stands for. But if you push it once, normally it'll announce the IP address. And if you push and hold it until the lights on the front start flashing, um, then it will reset it to factory defaults. The other thing that I like about it is that uh, about um, this interface connection to the speaker that I've already mentioned is that when you press and hold the RTMF button, RTFM button, that it will announce that it's being reset to factory defaults. So you don't have to guess. So I'm, I'm going ahead to press it. And we should hear that it's being reset. Restoring default. Rebooting. Okay. And there it goes. So that will take a minute to reset. And as soon as it does, we'll come back and we'll get started. Okay. It's had time to completely reset the factory defaults. So if we use our paper clip in the RTFM button one more time here, it'll tell us the IP address. Okay. Your IP address is 192.168.1.191. You notice I had to press that three times. It seems to be this perfect timing, uh, not too short, not too long, but uh, a few retries is all it takes to get it to the right one. So that was 191. Another way to find that, there are at least a couple more ways, is to use some kind of LAN scanner. And I actually use uh, a utility called LAN scan here on my Mac. And if I scan my network real quick, assuming I'm on the same network, then I can look for uh, the vendor name Cyberdata. And there you see it again as .191. They also have a utility that they offer for download on their page that you can use to find their products uh, but there's no need as you know if you've got either one of these methods ready to go so let's see we're going to go ahead and open up that page 191 and Let's see, I guess I've logged in so many times that it has saved the password and it doesn't prompt me anymore. Uh, but normally the, the username and password default would be admin and admin, and then you can change it here, of course. Uh, let's go to the device page. I wanna show you one other thing here. So at the bottom of the page here, if you've got the speaker connected like I uh, recommended, then you can click this test audio button 
and it'll this play a message. This is Cypher Data IP Speaker Test Message. Okay, and then you can do the same thing with a test multicast when we get that set up. I'll go ahead and click it, but we shouldn't hear anything because I don't have any phones listening on the proper multicast address. Okay, and so nothing played. Now another thing I want you to see here is this save and reboot bo button at the bottom. It's just one of the quirks of the interface on this CyberData paging server that you both have to save it and reboot it, and it's not very evident from the interface. I had to look that up in the manual to find that it was required. So pretty much anywhere you see a reboot button, you can just plan on saving it and then rebooting it. So it's just something that you very much need to be aware of and remember. Let's see here. All right, we're ready to go to FreePBX, this little test server that I have set up. And we're going to create the extension for this paging server. And let's make sure I don't have it sitting out here already. OK, I don't. So I'm going to add an extension. It's going to be a PJSIP extension. And I'm going to use extension 700. We'll call it paging server. And I'll go ahead and copy this secret or the password to the clipboard. And then I need to go to advanced. Now you'll find this, um, this advice to change this on any asterisk based system on the, the uh, Cyberdata FAQ page which is where I found it. But basically, you need to do two things. You need to change this qualify frequency from 60 to 0 in our case. And we'll go ahead and submit that and apply it as soon as it comes up. And while that's applying, we're going to go over to the CyberData paging server itself and go to the SIP tab and begin configuring the, the SIP server information. But that second thing that I mentioned, is a setting on this page down here under re-registration. They want you to set that to five minutes or 300 seconds. So I'll do that before I forget about it, and then I'll configure the rest of this. So the IP address of our SIP server is 192.168.1.16, and we are on port 5060. The ID and authorization ID are both 700, and I'm just going to paste in that password that I copied earlier. And I have to save it. Notice that I have a reboot button on this page, and so I better reboot it as soon as the save is complete so that it will go ahead and register. Now that takes a little bit of time, so I'll just fast forward as soon as that's ready. Okay, that's finished, and you can see on the main uh, home page here that refreshed as soon as it was done that the SIP server is registered. One thing that I forgot to do was set a static IP address here so let's go ahead and do that now on the network tab. I'm going to change this to paging server as a host name and then our address is going to be 192.168.1.20 with a slash 24 mask. And again, not only do we need to save that, but we need to reboot that. So as soon as that's done rebooting, we'll come right back. Okay, it has rebooted, but you notice that it is not redirecting me to the new IP address. Some devices are smart enough to do that. Turns out that's just not a feature in the paging server. So we set it to dot .20. We'll just manually go there now. And comes right up. Now it shouldn't work on any multicast devices, uh, but it will work out the speaker that we have connected to it. So let's take a look over here. We're just going to use the Yay link here to dial 700 and press send. Enter the two digit zone number. We're gonna dial 00. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. That's just the speaker talking. Test, test. Okay. So that is that testing or, uh, uh, working. Now we need to go to free PBX. 
and we need to uh, go to Endpoint Manager. Now notice we have done this so far without Endpoint Manager. We've set up the, the SIP connection on the paging server uh, with just by doing it manually. But now we want to use Endpoint Manager because it's by far the easiest way to get uh, the uh, multicast addresses onto the phone. So our test phone here is 150 and it's in the San Goma default template. And you'll see right here where we put multicast addresses. Now to know what that multicast address is, we're going to go back to the paging server and we're going to go to P groups or paging groups and we are just going to copy this address out of here and the port and we can remember port so it's port 2000 and right here we're going to paste that in port 2000 we're going to rebuild and update the phones and we can see that the phone here should pick up that new um, provision command here in just a moment it's going okay now what I'm going to do is turn this paging up uh, the amplifier uh, for the speaker down all the way so that we can tell that this is actually working. So we'll dial 700 on the yay link, press send. Enter the two digit zone number. And notice that this this phone, this phone is, is now, now paging. paging. Test, Test. One, two, one, two, three. three. Okay. That's pretty much it for this uh, video. A big thanks to Cyberdata for sending over the paging server. If you'd like to see more of its capabilities and features, then be sure to watch upcoming videos in this series, where we'll not only go over the CyberData paging server, but we'll also go over multicast design in a large school environment. If you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up. It really helps. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe and maybe hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. If you're interested in a free PBX system for your school, church, or business, then use the link in the description below to go to our website, fill out an interest form, and someone will contact you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.